here we are, it's winter. Not great motorcycling weather, you've got to say. It's pretty cold, although it's not actually raining, so we should be thankful for that. And we're at Lake Cadinia outside Melbourne in Victoria, Australia. And the motorcycle we're looking at today has come right around the world. It's from Germany, it's BMW's R1200 RT, the SE version, and I'm Guy Allen. One of the trademarks for BMW's big road bikes is this, the Paralever rear end. Now it's a shaft drive that's actually double jointed and what it does is it provides a very even feel at the rear when you're powering on and powering off. It's also light on the maintenance and you've got a single sided rear wheel which means it's very easy to detach. Now up front we've got something a bit different too. BMW has gone for the dual lever front end. Now it's a little different to a telefork front end, it doesn't provide all the subtleties of feedback that you get with a fork, but it's nevertheless a very strong performer and very reassuring on the road. In this touring application it works very well. Now something else a bike has is of course good current brakes, but these brakes are linked to an ABS system, which means that if you get a bit over ambitious or you don't read the road surface properly, it will nevertheless give you a nice safety net and still pull the bike up quickly without it spilling over. There's a couple of things that really make this stand out as a touring bike. One is but despite the fact it's fully equipped, it's relatively light, it's about 230 kilos dry. That's not much for a fully featured tourer. The other is that it feels relatively understressed and the company knows a lot about building touring bikes. It handles more than acceptably, it's got much more than adequate performance and at the end of the day you can actually get off it and not feel particularly stressed. One of the other things I do like of course is you know you can rely on this bike, it's got ABS, it's got a number of other safety features on it, so again that takes a little bit of the stress out of riding. There's two things I can advise with BMWs like this. One is to make sure you actually read the owner's manual, but also when you buy it, make sure you look at the accessories catalogue. This bike is fitted with heated hand grips here, and believe it or not, heated seats as well. Now it doesn't stop there. When you move across to the other side of the bike, you'll see you've got various controls for the radio and CD if you fit the stacker. Most importantly, however, it's got this little gadget, ESA, which is an electronic suspension adjustment. Now that is a very clever device and a well-developed system. We've ridden this on a few BMWs and it works great. It will allow you to adjust the preload on the spring for different weights and it will also allow you to adjust the damping. It's a very good system. This here should be on every touring bike. That's the cruise control. Anybody who's ridden once one will swear by it because it really takes the strain out of controlling your speed over long distances, particularly in these days of fairly heavy speed enforcement. What's it like dynamically? Believe it or not, it might be big, but it's actually surprisingly light. So it handles nicely, there's plenty of strength in the brakes, and there's quite a lot of performance. Overall, it comes up as a good package. It can handle a tight road, it's good out on the open road, it's not the sharpest thing in the box, but then again BMW has sports bikes for that. One of the zillion gadgets on this bike is this, the electronically adjustable windscreen. Looks like a gimmick, but it's actually quite effective. I like it down low for its clean wind spill when you're going on across a tight road. And then fully up on the open road, it provides a lot of protection, particularly on a cold day like this. We've got a big country to cover and this bike is actually ideally suited to the purpose. What does it cost? $30,000 or just above in fact, $30,350 and you can accessorise up from that. Is it worth it? Well it is a lot of money but then again it's a lot of motorcycle and I suspect you stop worrying about the price when you're somewhere between Melbourne and Perth and enjoying the scenery.